Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, hope you're doing well. For those of you who don't know me, I am Joe, I'm the owner here at Barrow Motors Limited and I also run this YouTube channel, Shifting Metal. I'm very pleased to tell you that we are busier than we have ever been. We have cars absolutely everywhere and we're also putting out more content than we ever have, not just three videos a week, it's more like four or five now, plus some on our podcast channel, plus some on the Barrow Motors channel, so we are very, very busy, which means that I actually need to hire someone else and I have agreed to hire another videographer, but there is one problem with that. This is our current office setup where Toby and I work. Not only do we do our video editing in here, I'm sat here with my MacBook, Toby's got his on that side of the desk in this tiny little, what is probably a, I don't know, three by two office. Um, I also have to do all of my buying in here, taking phone calls, and of course we're right on the back of reception, so it's very busy. The workshop's through that door there and reception's through there, so it's quite noisy and Obviously, there's no space for a third person in here. It would be ridiculously cramped. So moving forward, we definitely need a new solution, which is why I have acquired us some state-of-the-art office space. Let's go and check it out. And here it is. 20 foot by eight foot of pure high-tech office working space. Admittedly, it needs a little bit of work, but lend me your imagination. This is going to be a very smart, purpose-built media office. What we've got is a regular 20-foot shipping container that I bought quite cheaply, I might add. By the time we finish this project, I will let you know how much everything cost. I found a very good company who got me quite a nice quality used shipping container. I imagine it's certainly been to China at some point in its life. We are gonna turn this into a media office for me, Toby, and the new editor. So let me tell you what the plan is. We are going to have, right at the front here, we'll probably leave this as a bit of an entrance step so that we can have a set of French doors here, double glazed, and then these will still be able to close. And if ever we need to move this, or we wanna transport it somewhere else, then we can still pick up the whole container we can get it back out of here again. All we're gonna have is one big 16 amp plug on the outside, we'll have an air conditioning unit. There's not gonna be any water or any of that sort of stuff, but we'll have internet and all that sort of stuff in here. But that will give us the opportunity to keep these open, maybe have some nice down lights out here, a bit of cladding on the outside, but we can still close it off and make it look just like a container and we can ship it around. Once you get inside, we're gonna have one long desk along this side, which will be for Toby and Jason, our new editor, they can sit there, they're each gonna have screens on the wall so that they can connect in their MacBook, have two screens so they can do their editing efficiently. Then we're gonna put a nice feature wall on the back here. I'm not entirely sure on what we're gonna do, but as far as my plans go so far, some of that slap wall that everyone's doing, it's very in at the moment, isn't it? But it'll probably go right out of fashion the minute I do it, and certainly the minute I sit in front of it. We'll put a TV on the wall here so we can have a CCTV on so we know exactly what's going on in the garage. So if the guys wanna get our weekly footage, they'll see what's going on and then you can run out there and do that. Air conditioning unit up here. We're gonna have a nice shelving unit so we can keep all of our equipment on charge and ready if I wanna go out and film a bit of in-car content or whatever, I can grab myself a GoPro, a microphone, and all that sort of stuff. If the guys are gonna go out and get some B-roll, they can grab the drone and all that sort of stuff. Then we'll put some nice down lighters in here and maybe some plants and stuff just to make it a nice place to be. In reality, this shouldn't really be that much of a job if you get a good carpenter in to kind of frame up the walls, put some insulation in, get an electrician in to first fix all the electrics, build the desks, put some carpet tiles down, timber clad the walls because we're not gonna plasterboard them. It shouldn't really take them that long. The only problem with that is I've spoken to said electricians and carpenters, in fact, several carpenters I've got in touch with, and none of them can start for at least two weeks. And that is a problem because our editor starts in about 10 days, which means I think I'm gonna to have to do it. How hard can it be? Let's find out. I make shift plastic. I don't know how much I trust that spirit level. Would you say you had a good one? Yeah, I got it in the car, so I'm not grabbing much. Oh yeah, let's find out how level this actually is. I'll go and grab them. I'll grab the jack. Kind of 
ruins that plan, doesn't it? Nice! <laughs> That's not that good. Everyone's going to tell me I'm doing this wrong because we're going to put it up the other end and I'm measuring here, but it should be fairly square. Or bring out, not this end. What do I say about measuring? Smaller? Uh, yeah, I don't get it. Uh, I, mean, I expect the next one to be fine. I think this corner has just had a bit of a ding in. Yeah, that's right. No, I, I did go slightly larger on that, so don't worry. We could do 2.4, 2.4 sections on the sides first and then do the end. The tricky bit is always these corner boxes, so you're going to have to go around them. The flying toes were flying. This is what I hate about doing this sort of uh, fan. You always lose it. Yeah. I could put it right at the end, but it's better to have something structural right where the door frame is going to go. We are making some pretty decent progress. Until we didn't start till about what, half 12, one. It's not like three yet. We are flying, mate. Floor in, roof, joists, battens, whatever you want to call them, in. I reckon if we do the end, do a stud frame for the end of wall now, and then we can get the ply on there because it's going to be the way they're shaped. We're going to have to go inside of this here, into there, and by the time we put our 3v2s on here, we're not going to be able to access that anyway, so we'll make the frame on the floor yeah, and then put okay. it in, that's what we're going to do for the rest of it going forward, and then that will hold all those roof joints Yeah, because we're going to tap it in at the top. Well, they'll be in like that, then we can yeah. screw up and screw down. Yeah. Let's go and sit in the air conditioning for a minute, Tobes, check some emails, have a little sip of holy. <laughs> No, no, no. Measure twice, cut once. End of day one, come inside, we'll have a look what we've done. We've got the Surtex down on the floor, or whatever it's called, what have we got? Uni Lin on the floor. We're doing a floating floor, so we've got uh, floor sheets on there. We've put our roof joist beamy things in and done the end wall. That's insulated. We've got one stud frame up here. Tomorrow we'll do the rest to get it all the way down to there. I might even see if I can get the window, doors, whatever for the end. And then we'll have to do first fix electrics. So running all the cables in for the sockets lights we want to have probably six down lighters in here just to keep it neat and tidy we're going to clad the ceiling as well and i'm going to stain that like dark brown oak whatever walls white and then we'll probably have a couple of down lighters on the outside just to make it look nice once we've got all the first fix in which shouldn't be too hard i think on my way home tonight i'm going to go and pick up some 1.5 twin and earth and some 2.5 twin and earth we need a little consumer unit we need a 16 amp socket for the outside out there as well. I feel like we've made pretty good progress for about four, yeah, about four, four and a half hours work today. Um, looking forward to uh, getting more done. So that is it for day two. We're gonna lock it up. No, day two, getting ahead of myself. That's the end of day one. We'll see you for day two. We've got nine days until Jason, the new editor, starts. But tomorrow, I was going to come in and do this and start cladding it and things, but I think I will give myself a day off because on Monday, Toby and I also won't be here. We won't really crack on with this because we are going off to film a video somewhere. So 
that will leave us seven days. I feel like we've got pretty far in the space of one day so far. Originally, I thought, oh, I'll run all my first fix electric around the back here. But then if, well, I was about to say, if you feel, you can't, Toby could. You'll feel the metals are quite warm. So if we'd run the cables in behind, obviously what happens when you put load through cables is they get warm anyway. If you put too much through them, they get hotter. So putting them outside against the heat, it's not really going to be a great idea. They ideally want to be inside the cell tech so they're insulated so they're not getting hot. And from this point, put X amount more panels in. Now, like I say, we're away on Monday, so maybe Dan can, but if we can't, we'll just frame up to the edge here. And then when we've got the door, we can then we'll have something to frame off of. When you come back, it may look slightly different because someone may have been at work in here, but we will see. I think we're making good progress though, feeling confident so far. See you for day three. So while I was away yesterday at G3, Dan has been, well, I say he's been cracking on. He only got a, like half an hour at it or whatever, but I managed to knock up these two little M frames to go in here to kind of finish up what will be our wall cladding. And he's now cutting in insulation while I sort out all the admin stuff that I've been meaning to catch up on. I think we'll just start cladding from the bottom up because we could potentially get the sides done and maybe even start some of the, we'll see, we'll see how time goes. Uh, and then Brad, when he comes tomorrow, can put the electrics in and get ready to sort of drill the holes and whatever. So let's head to Wix, Western Supermare. We will go and get some cladding, some plasterboard um, boxes for the for the electrics. It is very hot today. Uh, we now have all of the ring main in. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but uh, it will do sockets over there runs all the way around to where we're going to have our sort of input in the corner which means we can start cladding i've sprayed a little bit of expanding foam into some of the gaps which are still pumping out which we'll sort out as we go so brad and charlie have now put in our uh lightning we're going to do track lighting what i didn't think about when doing this was i was going to do the cladding all over the ceiling but it's taking longer than i thought i thought this would be quicker because it's basically a finished product, other than a bit of paint to go on it. If we, rather than doing plasterboard or sheets, they've got big sections. But because I did these with 60 centimetre gaps, not 60 centimetre centres, so that we can cut the sheets perfectly in half, it just won't. The boards will just be so much waste if you're ridiculous. So we're going to run battens this way now, and then we're going to ply the roof, paint it black. If we get that up and that up and get the track light tomorrow, maybe. So we've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday and Monday, which I thought was a bank holiday but isn't, but it's probably good because it gave us an extra day before Jason, the new editor, starts. And do you know what? I'm not used to this kind of work. I'm used to being quite sedentary, sat at my desk. But one thing has helped me keep going. So today's video is sponsored by Holy. And if you haven't heard of Holy before, they are the kind of conscience-free energy drink. They also do rehydration drinks and they do iced tea drinks as well. As a lot of you know, I have got a bad habit of drinking a lot of fizzy drinks and I really do need to kick the habit. So naturally, when Holy reached out and said they had a healthy alternative to all the fizzy drinks I've been drinking, I was all ears. Let's make one and I'll tell you all about it. If you get their starter pack, which I highly recommend, you will get a selection of their iced tea powders, their rehydration powders, which so far have been the ones that I've enjoyed the most, and their energy powders as well. Come in little sachets like this, there's absolutely loads of different flavors. Basically, you just put 500 milliliters of water into your shaker, which for those of you who've been to the gym, I did used to go to the gym in the past, believe it or not. Put your powder in, put your lid on, Give it a shake, as you would with any of these drinks. So 
So some of the highlight points with these, no sugar, no artificial flavors, and they are under 20 calories per 500 milliliter drink like this. They are also under 80 pence each. You can buy it in big tubs as well. So it's easy to keep this and your shaker with you if you're a tradesman, a bit like I have been this week. You can carry it around with you and make up your favorite drink at any time. You don't have to keep going to the shop and trying to get a drink and trying to get a cold one. And the great news for you guys at home is if you use my code, Metal5, you can get five pounds off your first order and then use my code METAL and you'll get 10% off every order thereafter. Thank you, Holy, for sponsoring this video. Let's get on with the build. Uh, right, start of another day. I wazzed some white emulsion on the ceiling last night before I left here, so I wanted to get that done. I did start, as you can tell by the end wall, I tried to use like a battery powered sprayer thing. Now, if you've seen those on Facebook or whatever, which is where I saw them, said I was gonna get one, my dad already had one. You can connect like a Makita battery to it and spray it. It was a bit pants really, because you had to really thin it down and it would just start dripping off as water, which is why even though I masked that up, I've got someone here, so I have to sand that off a little bit. So I ended up rollering it. It could do with another coat really, but I'm not gonna bother because it's white and you know, it's a bit rustic. It almost looks a bit like a whitewash. I haven't got time. Um, and then when I, it, I've got some overspray in the back, oh, I was like, oh, that might be quite cool actually. I'll do some little splats and maybe when I put the strips of wood on it, it would look quite cool. Toby was worried it might be too dark anyway. And I've looked at it now and I think it looks it's gonna look rubbish, so we'll have to paint that again. But first and foremost, um, we're gonna get some more of the wax on the cladding, which I'm hoping this comes across on camera, because if you look at it like in person, it's, it's dark, but it's still, you know, I think it does look like it's quite good on camera. When I try and take pictures of the whole thing from outside, that just looks like it's black, like it looks really dark. We've steined up one wall, or waxed, as you can see. We're gonna hang off and do it this side because we're both just getting like <coughs> strain from painting and rubbing and whatever. Uh, but we're now gonna try and start the frame for the door. As soon as that's in, we'll start cladding that up. Get insulated wires out for the lighting. While we wait for Brad to come in and wire it up, we might even get to the, probably do desk first, then we can put monitor mounts on the wall. TV looks like it's arrived today, so TV can go on the wall over here, obviously my desk. Here, we still need to run the ethernet cable down here so we can have a Wi-Fi access point. Um, in reality, we're getting very close. We're still waiting on carpet tiles. Hopefully they'll turn up today or tomorrow. At the very latest Monday. But we are very, very close as long as this door and everything all goes in okay and we're on the right track. building desks today. Uh, I don't know if I'll get that far. I'll probably build desk legs, uh, ideally, and have all the carpet tiles down. I'll probably do oh, yeah, stain the walls, skirting boards on, some bits of trim outside potentially. Then I'm gonna have to go to Wix either this afternoon or tomorrow, maybe Sunday, to get some more of this batten, some more cladding, so we can finish up the inside there and the outside. Some effect, I guess. I changed my mind in the end. You know what I'm saying about having a charging station for all the equipment. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking about having shelves and whatever. But I just kept looking on YouTube to see what people did as like charging stations, whatever, whatever. And everyone just uses like pegboard. So you've got like blackboard on the wall, those holes in, you kind of like take your DJI charger and kind of fit it on there. And I was like, mm. So I've bought like a little cheap black, uh, side table things, we can mm -hmm. put bits of paper and I can have a printer there or whatever. And then we'll have pegboard up above. Right, Sunday update. Slap walling bit is done, just needs to be stained. Cladding above the door, done, but needs to be stained. Uh, outside, same again, cladding at the top and the side trims, they just need to be stained. That's a little job we can do tomorrow. Finished up making the other two legs there being painted and now I'm on to a desktop. Uh, I think I'm going to cut my one first because then there'll be an off cut and I'll try some stain on that to see what kind of colour we want. I mean, it's quite a nice colour already, but I might go, I mean, it is all very dark in there really, but we'll see. Um, it's just very heavy. I'm going to flip this and then get it cut. 
Right, that's a very, very rough idea of what my desk is going to look like. And to be fair, what the other desk is going to look like, but with three legs and longer going along there. What I need to do now is, because I've never used it before, practice with a router on the end of here and see if I can get it working. This here may well be the background of a lot of future videos, fingers crossed. That is it, I'm knackered. I'm going home and uh, yeah, see you here bright and breezy tomorrow. I'm feeling very, very confident about this being ready for Tuesday now. What's next on the agenda? I'm just gonna stain these desks Rather than going with the same stain, it's probably gonna look very, very similar, although that's fine, this is oak. I'm just gonna use some medium oak dye, which is very light, to be honest. But I think it'd be nice to have something, it'd be nice to have a bit of contrast, but we'll see. And then I'm gonna put a clear wax over the top so it's got a nice smooth finish. It's getting early. Nice. Let's do a bit of light now. Yeah, I'll get these right in first, okay. In nightmare, trying to get that level. Bear in mind the container's probably not level, so then trying to put the TV level, but no matter what I did, I think, you ever had like those TV brackets, you get a cheap one and they just <laughs> twisted? Yeah. And you put it up level, you put the bracket up level, you put the TV on, it's like, the f***? <laughs> oh, I was doing my oh, with the bracket, and it? I was doing my night incident. So we have actually managed to get the media office done. We managed to do it just, just by the skin of our teeth on time. And I am really pleased with how it turned out. Let's have a look inside. Starting at the front, I guess, where we come in, the door. I was gonna spend about 600 pounds on getting a set of French doors uh, from Facebook Marketplace. But actually, I noticed that our like neighbor across the road, the guy that we'd lent some axle stands to in the past, had one of this door lying out in his driveway because had new doors. So we managed to get this completely free. So that saved quite a bit of money on the budget. And it's quite nice. I mean, it's, I'm gonna paint it, I think, in the long run, but for now, it does the job perfectly. I've made a nice little, coat hook over here using some spark plugs from a very old NGK spark plug rack. I don't think they would have come out of like a lawnmower or something, so they weren't much use to us. So I've put them in there. We've got our longest desk here. There's a three meter long desk, uh, oak worktop from Wix. These are about 200 quid a worktop each. Uh, we've got one here and cut another one down a bit shorter for my desk. The guys have each got HP screens to go with their MacBooks. These were an absolute bargain. It was 78 quid for two, secondhand on eBay. They didn't have any stands that came with them, but that didn't bother me because we were gonna mount them directly on the wall like we have. We've got a nice little bit of pegboard in the middle so you can hang your headphones and stuff like that. We've got some little drawers here, they're quite handy. That was one thing that was lacking in the other office and my farm office as well, it's just not having much drawer space. One of my favorite features here though is while we've got these little grommets for the desk for the cables to come up through, I also invested in some of these little wireless charging ones. So you can put your phone on there and it will charge. You can pop it up as well and you've got two USB charging ports. So Toby's got his headphones on charge. So they were a good little buy, I think. You probably heard me talking about our charging station. Originally, I was gonna have just a big kind of set of bookcases and charge everything on there. When I looked on YouTube, everyone seemed to do this kind of pegboard stuff. So that is what we've done for now. You have to excuse my cable management. But we've got everything on charge up here from camera batteries to microphone batteries, some stands. We've got the drone batteries. We've even got my little draggy box. It's all just on there. And things like the little DJI, which I absolutely love. I can then just whip that out and go off and film some content of my own. I got this on Amazon, it's about like 30 quid. Um, just somewhere to store some of the boxes that we use, things like that. And your miscellaneous scissors and Velcro for putting stuff on there. We also have a little whiteboard on the wall so we can keep track of everything we need to do. So we can now tick off office video. And the one below is saying, please subscribe, sir. Please do it, really help us out. Next, as we come along, we've got the electric 
Wi-Fi air conditioning unit. This was an absolute bargain. These are 500 pounds. They're really easy to install. So massive shout out to Brad and Charlie of BMH Electrical. Um, got that up there. Underneath, we've got the TV, which does link to a HDMI over where the guys work on their desk. So if they want to show me a video, they can plug that in. We can all sit here and watch it together. But nine times out of 10, I've got a little computer on the back of there and it is running our CCTV. So we can all keep an eye on what's going on because if a car turns up, the lads probably want to go out and film it. And if someone's slacking off, I want to go out and let them know. This is of course my favorite part. This is my area. I've got my nice curved LG screen here with my MacBook. My desk, which is about 1.4 meters long, I think I decided in the end. With this slat wall that I did myself that was quite expensive. I think the timber for this was around about 120 quid, but that is significantly cheaper than it is if you buy it in a kit form where you put a sheet up. So quite pleased with how it turned out. It does feel a bit like a sweat lodge in here, but you know, that's all right. We've got air conditioning to keep it cool. We don't have to sweat. Um, it makes like quite a good background though, I think. And obviously I did the LED strip in the skirting board down here. So we've got a bit of an up light. I don't know if it's had quite the desired effect I wanted, but I still think it looks pretty cool. We've got a couple of fake plants because there's no sense having real ones in here because you know, I'll kill them. That's just how it goes. We've got probably what is my favorite feature in here. This is a front disc off the Audi RS4 that you may have seen in one of our previous videos. They were warped very slightly. So we had to replace them. What I've actually done is just welded a plate on the back and put a clock mechanism through because there are 12 bolts on here and they line up perfectly. So that is my new clock in the background. If you want to see how I made that, there is going to be a video coming soon where I'm going to make that and some other stuff out of some scrap engine parts to kind of show you how you can make art out of scrap. So make sure you're subscribed for that as well. So on the whole, I am really, really happy with how everything has turned out, but I'm sure what you want to know is how much did I spend on getting this done? I have made myself a little spreadsheet to keep track of every time that I spent money on this. I haven't broken it down into an item list. As much as I can remember or I can find, I will put in the description so you can check it out down there. I'll give you a rundown basically of how much we spent in different places and how much I've spent in total. The container itself was £2,100, including the VAT, including delivery. So that's £2,100 delivered and dumped here. Air conditioning was £500. Uh, we spent around about 300 pounds on monitors and mounts, things like that. Very roughly speaking, from CRS to Wix to our local DIY store proper job, the materials for this cost me around about 2,600 pounds. Probably round that up a little bit when you take into account the carpet tiles, things like that, which were shocking. I cheaped out on those. I managed to get all the carpet tiles for about 80 quid, but they were very badly cut. They weren't square, which made it a bit of a pain to do. So don't cheap out on the carpet tiles. Then everything else on top, all the electrical bits, um, TVs, monitors, furniture, desk chairs, things like that, all added up to bring me to a grand total for this container of £6,486, which I think is an absolute bargain. It sounds a lot of money, but in reality, I was looking at renting an office and that would have cost me at least that plus VAT a year. So if we get one year's use out of this thing, it's paid for itself. And the massive benefit is it's on site, so we don't have to travel from somewhere else. And if we ever wanted to move it, we can just pick it up and take it somewhere else. One thing I haven't accounted for on this spreadsheet is the labor. So I had my time, even Toby got involved in helping out. Dan did a lot of help, so a massive shout out to Dan. Thank you so much for that. And obviously Brad and Charlie of BMH Electrical, he has yet to send me a bill. So I think we could maybe round this up to about £7,000, but it still seems absolute bargain. If you're doing this on your own, then obviously you would save yourself those costs. And one of my other favourite things about this is the fact that I can now close it up and it just looks like any other shipping container. We may go ahead and paint this on the outside at some point, but for now I'm quite happy to just get in there and get working. And I quite like the fact that it just looks rustic on the outside. So like I say, we may end up doing a couple of little extra things to this, but as far as this video goes, that is the end of this project. And I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please do get a thumbs up. It'll really help us out. Do consider subscribing. When we hit 100,000 subscribers, I am gonna do a big giveaway. We're actually just about to announce the winner of our 75,000 subscriber giveaway, where we're giving away a 2000 pound tag oil watch and the 100,000 subscriber is only gonna be bigger and better. Thanks to Holy for sponsoring this video and keeping me hydrated while I sweated away in there as I was building it. Thank you for watching. That is it for this time. We'll see you next time.